ओम सहनावगतु सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर्यं करवावहै तेजस्विनावधीतमस्तु मा विद्विषावहै ओम शान्ति 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 today we will be concluding section 16 after a long time i don't even know when we started section 16 section 16 is not some kind of a um, you know clause in a law it is a chapter in a chapter or section in the bodha sara and uh, what is great about this section is that it shows the lifestyle it has shown us the lifestyle of exalted sages how they go through the day how they go through the life how they look at the ramayana mahabharata all these things and what is their uh, what is their vision in terms of the everyday living which is of course a great source of uh, curiosity and interest for everybody because what they do their sadhana their their, uh, their lakshana uh, their definition of who they are becomes sadhana for the rest of the people who are interested in uh, being a yogi wanna be so this is for the yogi and the yogi wanna be it is uh, it, it it doubles down as the sadhana and so we have been seeing uh, the fineness uh, and the sophistication of this writer um indra hari the author of the bodhasara uh, how he has made even the mundane uh, very very uh, uh, wonderful to read and uh, the mundane meaning how does the yogi wash his face <laughs> we, we even saw that through the with the soap of the mantra and the face is uh, the, the water is that of the Uh, the clean antakarana water is that of the upanishad with the upanishad waters and the soap of the mantra the face meaning that which one presents to the world is cleansed and like this we saw how every mundane activity is turned into a spiritual life for the yogi and so then the only thing that is now left is what the sleep routine <laughs> that is what is left so how does the yogi the great sage how are uh, the gnanis how do they floss and brush their teeth <laughs> how do they what kind of jammies they wear and then what else how do they fall asleep all this is there in a short section called the sleep uh, the sleep routine of the great sages and with this this beautiful and then there are a couple of verses there are two verses for the sleep routine and then uh, finally uh, there is a summary a summation of uh, two three verses of of this whole um, section of this whole chapter on the uh, on the life of the sages very beautiful and and the wonderful imagery and the uh, and the rich puns continue let us find out let us read that अथ निशा व्यवहार निर्णय निर्णय एसरटेनमेंट दिस इज दि टाइटल ऑफ द सेक्शन निर्णय एसरटेनमेंट एसरटेनमेंट अथ नाउ सो नाउ देर इज एन एसर नाउ वी आर एंटरिंग एन एसरटेनमेंट एन एसरटेनमेंट ऑफ वॉट इफ यू आर्स निशा व्यवहार व्यवहार एक्टिविटीज निशा नाइट so now there is the ascertainment of the nightly routine of who of the great sages and so a little bit about the traditional nightly routine uh, in in ancient india or even now people practice this and uh, the idea is to uh, is is what, what do you do to uh, for you uh, the doors would be kept open uh, up till the evening 
uh, till the mosquito time. <laughs> and when the mosquito time comes, in the evening the doors are closed and bolted because you don't want any mosquitoes or even other nocturnal entities such as thieves, etc. to come to the house. So the, uh, the um, securing of the door is very important. So they would do that. And then what else would they do? They would get into bed. And before that, they would, um, you know, they would, with the, the, they would consume a drink at night. And uh, what is that drink? Um, they would have a glass of milk sweetened with honey. Don't ask me why. No, I don't know. But this is what it was. And uh, a glass of milk sweetened with honey. And that was, that, that was had. It was supposed to sort of be a winding down thing. Even in India, sometimes people sleep after drinking a glass of milk. Milk, I suppose, this is what, uh, this is how it has come about. Now, that glass of milk has another, um, another overtone here. That glass of milk is also drunk by newlyweds. This is also there and this is important here because of the particular imagery that is going to come. Okay. So then with, uh, with this uh, introduction and a little bit uh, gaining a little bit of familiarity with this, let us, uh, uh, let us read this verse. And if you're following the book, it's on the top of page 292, section 16, subsection 30. Okay. The last uh, section, 30, 31 are the last sections here. Yate Thavya Bahadana Divase Bhukte Chasandhya Sukhe Jata Yamishi Nishchale Namanasa Dattva Kapata Gala Pitva Samprati Shuddha Bodha Madhura Shiram Yatheshtam Yuva Paryanke Susamadhina Bani Muhu Kanchid Kanchid Hunakti Priya. So this is the verse. It's in the it's it's in a very playful meter. The meter, the chandas is called Shadula Vikridita. The baby tiger at play. The tiger cub at play. That is supposed to be the meat. So if a tiger cub is playing, it's not going to go straight from one thing to another. It's going to go bat a few things here and topple off something there, roll over in the mud and then go there. And so this, uh, uh, in the similar fashion, uh, this has a very playful quality and is a very uh, famous uh, chandas, a famous meter for a number of important compositions in the Shastra. Like the Dakshinamurti uh, uh, eulogy shloka is composed in this, uh, in this uh, meter uh, as well. Okay. So, ya te adha vyavahara namni divase. Ya, it's all in the absolute locative case meaning when 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 then 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 that's that when then construction so yate when it is gone what is gone yate means when it has passed what has passed what has gone vyavahara namni divase the day in the form of all kinds of activities when the day has wound down and come and come to a close. When the day is winding down and has come to a close, then what? Yavahara Namni. The day that is Nam, Nama means name. That which is called full of routine. <laughs> full of all kinds of things to do. That is what the day is. It's, it's filled with all kinds of activities and things to do, places to go, people to see. All these things, you know, are there to manage. So the day is, generally speaking, very, very busy. But now, all that has to be done has been done or not. But the day has finally passed. And then what? Then, Bhukte Cha Sandhya Sukhe. 
and not to bhukte means having indulged, having entertained, having taken in. Taken in what? Sandhya sukham. Sandhya means the, the late evening, the, the twilight, the um, sunset, all this. You know, so you can imagine a wonderful sunset, you can visualize. So, so the person, after having a, had a very busy day filled with activities, has kind of paused in the awe of the painting of Ishvara in the form of the sunset spread against the sky. So all the wonderful colors, the chirping birds going home, and that quietude of the, uh, the, the sunset, just like, uh, you know, the poets, this is all poetry. And even in English, the poets describe the evening time very beautifully. Wordsworth says, the evening time is as quiet as a nun. Okay. And so, of course, we have to think of a contemplative nun. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, if you think of the nun in Sound of Music, she was not very quiet. <clears throat> she made a lot of noise. So here, we are talking of a... Uh, so, the evening time, he says, as quiet as a nun. So, there is something magical about the evening time. So beautiful. Because it is everything is winding down, uh, all the animals are going home. We even have a name for the evening time. It is in, in vernacular uh, languages, it is called Godhuli. Dhuli means the dust, the dust raised by the cows and the calves going home. That is the time. So it's just a very magical time. So having just paused and enjoyed this time, then, then what? Uh, then Jatayam Mishi, as the night draws, as the night is born. And then with the, with the birth of the night, Jatayam Mishi, Nishchalena Manasa, Dattva Kapatar Gala. Kapataha, Kapatam, Kapataha means, Kapata means doors. Argala means the latch, the bolt. Kapata doors argala. Dattva means having done. Having what? Bolted the doors. Bolted the doors what? Manasa. What are the doors? In the form of the mind. Bolted the doors of the mind. Meaning what? This is contemplative time. No more all these things. Oh, should have, should have, should have, could have, could have. Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? What about that one? What is there to do tomorrow? And I better prepare today. All these things. Stop. Shh. <laughs> this is not the time for that. Silence. All the inner noise of the mind. So the, the doors are not being bolted to the house. <laughs> the doors are being bolted to the mind so that I don't let the various preoccupations of the world enter. I don't let the preoccupations enter. I protect myself from the preoccupations because this is the time of just winding down. Winding down time. This is my time. This is not the time what to do for somebody else, what, how to do this, what to do. I mean, everything is uh, in a way my time. But here this is my time in a special way. It's my time just for me not as somebody who is at the behest of all kinds of activities in order to just come to a place of uh, a place of reckoning. And so the thoughts are kept out like the mosquitoes, <laughs> like the thieves who come in and steal the peace. So the thieves are what? The thieves are the thoughts that come in and steal away the peace, steal away one's tranquility. And thoughts are like mosquitoes and other biting things that bite, cause welts, and then, uh, and then, uh, uh, and then you you get distracted. You have to scratch. You have to put some some cream on it, and so this is all very very distracting. 
and so therefore the door to the to the outer world just like one closes at the end of the day here to the the, the door is in the form of the management of the mind that door uh, fulfilled with all kinds of thoughts which are small which are passing ephemeral but still which one takes very seriously every single thought is elevated grown up you give it a lot of air like a balloon you know when it is not inflated it's just occupying a little bit of space and then you blow into it and give it light and it becomes bigger 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 and now you have to deal with it <laughs> now it is occupying a lot of space and then it becomes real oh i don't want this balloon to burst it's just full of hot air literally that's what it is full of but still that's what that's how the thoughts are without you know so that it's not that the thoughts come in the way of being who one is but here we are talking of the practice of the great sages so at some point in the in the day the thoughts are told to stay you stay there i stay here i'm going in a way manner of speaking inwards enough outward activity enough uh, of everything enough of uh, all kinds of pursuits enough of fulfilling ambitions and desires now the door to that is bolted why i'm getting ready for communion meditation quiet time being with oneself that is what it is so jatayam nishi jatayam why is it not jate because it is feminine jatayam nishi nishi when the when the night is born mishchalena by the unmoving mind the doors to the outer world of thoughts impressions and and all kinds of di, you know diverse things and uh, objects and people and events is closed getting ready for bed then uh yeah tattva tattva means having having the given the bolt to the door pitva pitva means having drunk samprati samprati means the uh, you know having uh, having the uh, samprati shuddha bodha madhuram samprati so samprati pitva having drunk but uh, having Uh, expressly drunk what shuddha bodha madhuram kshiram kshiram is the object here having drunk the milk kshiram milk what kind of milk madhuram kshiram a sweet milk what what is the sweet milk represent a sweet milk represents shuddha bodha perfect understanding pure understanding of the i an unshakable understanding of the i not mediated by all kinds of doubts despair i will never get this knowledge i am no good i am an idiot i should have known better all these second uh, guessing is not there i should have uh, done this i should have done that and maybe i should do this maybe i should do that there is no doubt there is no despair there is no error in the understanding and understanding that is free of doubt despair error vagueness the understanding is so clear and pure there is no despair there is no vagueness there is no error there is no guilt there is no hurt this kind of a firm understanding uh, of of oneself that is shuddha bodha madhuram kshiram kshiram means the milk the milk of perfect self knowledge that has been already drunk ingested so what is the milk now the teachings of the upanishad 
The milk is the Upanishad. Just like the mother's milk, it nourishes. It nourishes a newborn that is flailing for life. Just like the newborn cannot survive without the source of this milk, without the milk of the mother or some mother. Even the, if, if the newborn is raised on cow's milk, the cow is the mother. So, with, just like the newborn is not able to survive without the mother's milk, uh, in the same way, <clears throat> the flailing jiva, the flailing individual, crying on the brink of death when all the time. The crying, dying in individual, the dying jiva, dying a thousand deaths every day. Each time the hopes are dashed. Each time the, there is a disappointment. Each time one is not able to have one's way. Each time one is in doubt and despair. The crying jiva, crying its little head off. This kind of jiva is what? Is nourished by the milk, the sweet milk of bodha, understand. And there's a little bit of pun on bodha because it is the title of his work, Bodhasara. So this Bodhasara itself is the milk of understanding. He is uh, trying to insinuate that and not wrongly, very beautiful summation of the Upanishads we have seen so far. And so in this sweet milk of understanding, just as it is life giving to the infant, the infant is soothed and goes to sleep immediately. When the mother holds it and feeds the, feeds the child, the child goes to sleep. So similarly, all the, all the doubts have gone, the vagueness and the errors, the wrong understanding of the I as unlovable and full of incompleteness and full of doubts, etc. is gone. That, uh, that I am alienated is gone. One feels secure. In this, in the drinking of this milk. And then that's why Yatheshtam, how much milk to drink? Yatha ishtam. <laughs> Yatheshtam means as much as you want. There is no limit. There is no limit uh, for drinking out of the, uh, out of the endless, limitless vat of the Upanishadic knowledge. There is no such thing as too much Vedanta. <laughs> Somebody asked a question, is there something as too much Vedanta? Here the answer comes, no. There is no, no such thing as overdosing on Vedanta. Yeah, you can't overdose. Why? Because it is you. You can't overdose on it because it is you. Oh, but I have had enough. If you have had enough, enough, that's enough. Let up and go. That's all it is. And, uh, you know, sometimes what you think you've had enough because the, the, the other distractions are calling. The ascertainment to be in this knowledge has not been completely made. Vedanta appears boring or Vedanta appears too much or appears to take you away from other pursuits. And that's when you have to manage. You have to manage your time. You have to manage. You have to have an honest talk with yourself. How much is enough milk for me? That's what you have to ask. How much is enough? Because the teacher keeps on teaching. Yeah, that's not the issue at all. The teacher will keep on teaching. You decide. You decide what all you want to do in life. And then you carve out the first place for Vedanta. And then do the uh, adjust the other things. It's not that you can't do other things. You can do other things. Very successfully people do it. People raise families while studying Vedanta. People uh, pursue other things while studying Vedanta. But in the mind, the priority should be for Vedanta than other pursuits subserve. That is what is called Nishchayatmika Buddhi. That is what has to be. That ascertainment has to come. And then one can, one can enjoy all other pursuits without really uh, thinking that this is too much. And if it is too much, one has to reckon. So here, yatheshtam, as much as possible, as much as you need, as much as you like, you, one, the sage, has ingested the milk of perfect self-knowledge. 
unfailing, unswervingly established in this knowledge, then what? Muhuhu. Then again, uh, uh, again what? Uh, again, but then muhuhu, yuva. Yuva means the youthful one. The youthful one. Youthful one, there is a pun here. Because the Atma never grows old. The I never grows old. That's why knowing the self and uh, exposing oneself to Vedanta Shastra takes away the pressure of having to look young all the time, which is, which is a great pressure, I tell you. Which is all the time a great pressure. How do I look? And what to, what to do? And they have been doing some studies of this extreme uh, makeovers. And uh, now there are what? Digital makeovers. And that's what one, one likes to look like this a certain way. And then what you see on the screen and when you meet that particular celebrity, you won't even recognize. Even after layers of makeup, they look very different because digitally all the, uh, what is that called? The wrinkles here, the laugh lines and the frown lines are all removed digitally. And they are all covered up by, uh, what is that called, Photoshop. A shop that deals with, with alterations, digital alterations of who you are. And this is so that you don't have to go under the knife of some surgeon. That also you can do. That also people do frequently. But this is a quick fix. Quick fix. And this quick fix, uh, uh, what happens is that uh, the, there, is, uh, there is this. Immediately, the all the lines are gone. <laughs> all the lines are gone. You have covered up the laugh lines. You have covered up the frown lines. And what other lines are there? You have covered up the eye lines. You know, when you smile, the eyes crinkle and there are lines over there. You have covered up. But one thing you are never able to cover up. What is that? That you have the lines you are not able to cover up. <laughs> yeah. The fact that you have these lines, you are not able to cover up, no matter how much you try. This is the thing. And so, so this, uh, this kind of a, uh, uh, this, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, pressure to look a certain way and to look young all the time, Vedanta really takes away. You are no, no longer interested in various products that help to make one look. You know, that doesn't mean you have to look unkempt and all that. You know. Yes, Vedanta is not an excuse for not combing your hair and putting on a clean set of clothes. Okay, And the pandemic has <laughs> made us very lazy. Only up till here we have to be dressed. That's what people think. It's made us very, very lazy. And in fact, in one company, somebody told me this, that uh, there is, a, a, I have to go to work. I said, but it is Saturday. Uh, yeah, they are having a special session. I said, on what? On how to dress after the pandemic because people are coming to the office very, very sloppy with food stains on their clothes and everything. And so they, so they have become very unkempt. So study of Vedanta is not an excuse, excuse to, to be unkempt because one has certain duties towards the world and towards the people in it. And so, but, but here it means not being overly, uh, what's the word, obsessed with one's appearance, not being overly obsessed with uh, some kind of a, you know, I have to do this, have to do that, have to go here, have to go there. And then, this is external appearance and the same way the internal thing also. And by all means exercise, by all means walk, by all means take antioxidants. But then in America, we, we have an all or nothing attitude. Either one, even in the sleep, is, you know, is doing the dumbbells, even in sleep. That's why they are called dumbbells. Okay, yeah. Be careful with them. And uh, then, or one is constantly consuming 
asai berries, gozi berries. Very, very difficult yeah. and very, very strange. So this is the, <coughs> this is about, all about moderation. But then Vedanta really, when, when we study it with a, uh, with commitment, it takes away the pressure to look a certain way. It takes away the pressure to be young all the time. Why? Because the Atma does not die. The Atma does not change. And when I have, uh, when uh, the I has been walked over from this body-mind conglomeration to the I, which is unchanging and undying, always youthful, the pressure relaxes. So that's why here you are. And the teacher of the Vedanta, the original teacher in the form of Lord Dakshinamurti, is also called Yuva, ever young. Chitram Vatataro Mule, Vridha Shishya Guru Yuva, Guros to Maunam Vyakhyanam, Shishya Stuchinna Samshaya. Picture this under the banyan tree. Banyan tree is samsara because it keeps on reproducing itself. Picture this under the banyan tree and there is a, there are a few students and then there is a teacher. The teacher is ever youthful and the students are 92 with long beards and grey hair. Oh no, what is the strange picture? What is this? The students are old souls, means they have been around for a while. They have tried this, that and everything and not really understood. And finally they have come here. And the teacher is a picture of youth because the teacher has, is one with the teaching, which is, which, is, uh, which is always youthful. The teacher is one with the Atma, which is ever youthful. So the sage here is Yuva, ever youthful. Paryanke means in the bed. Samadhi namani. And what is the bed? The bed is called Samadhi. <laughs> bed is name is Samadhi, meaning you become one with the bed. You, you are united with the bed. And the bed is, uh, he, he, the, the bed that you have made is you have prepared the heart and the mind to go into itself. To lie down in itself, to rest in its own glory. That is Samadhi. Mughu Kanjit Bhunakti Priya. Bhunakti means enjoys. Enjoys Yuva also. Here a pun because it is not just the Atma, but here on, the le on another level, it's a very nuanced verse. So on another level, the Yuva means the newly wed. So the newlywed is eager to go to bed because Gunakti enjoys the beloved, hugs the beloved, embraces the beloved. And so what is the, the beloved? The beloved is the one's own Atma, one's own glory. Even the Sufis use the word term beloved for God, for that, that one that is in the heart. When the noise of the day has gone and the internal noise has been taken care of by Shama Dhamma and all these things and everything. Uh, when the internal noise has been taken care of, when the external uh, things are not there, when the Raga Dvesha, the strong prejudices and preferences are managed, that which, uh, which arises in times of quietude is, is not something to be afraid of. Usually one cannot sit quietly because what comes up are the surface level tensions of fears and wrong understanding of oneself. Those are the thoughts that one flees away from and tries to drown them out in various mechanisms such as, you know, going to malls, balls and all these things and keeping oneself busy and, and these kinds of activities. But here, there is no need to keep busy because that which arises when the mind is quiet, in fact, that which is always there, but one doesn't notice, that which arises is, is tranquility, is the glory of the self as 
limitlessly happy. So that that happiness, he, when is uh, when the jnani is engaging with the world, it's a roaring happiness. When the jnani is engaging deep within oneself, it's a quiet happiness, just like an, a roaring ocean or a tranquil ocean. There is limitless joy that here is not being expressed through various mechanisms or interactions with the with the world. It is just enjoyed quietly. <clears throat> quietly enjoy. So that is the beloved. The beloved is the truth of the self. The samadhi is the cessation of all activities in order to enter the truth of the self. Enjoy the truth of the truth of the self. So priyam kanchit some some beloved uh, uh, the, the sage is embracing enjoying on the bed of uh, samadhi. Now the next verse. Uh, waxes eloquent on the nature of this beloved, what does she look like? First question, why should it be she? Well, this is an ancient work and then generally uh, it is uh, the Vedanta ha has been directed towards men. But Narahari is an exception uh, because he does bring in women a lot and he brings in the feminine in a very, very uh, obvious way. And uh, we have to uh, applaud him for that. So, but if you still have a problem, why the beloved should be female? Then uh, you can uh, you can uh, study Sanskrit and compose some other verses with uh, with a, with the opposite uh, with the, with the opposite one. No problem. That is that is also something that will be there. And then you compose it. You give it to me. I will teach it. Okay. Yeah. No problem. We will do that. No problem at all. So there is no problem here. We just have to see what the what the, what is what is being conveyed here. Yeah. So the next one. Tanvangim tarunim vilasa rasika chitte chamat parinim jate premani nitya me basukhadam anandalila mayi. Kelanti murasitriyam nijakal anijakalam alingyatat sangamat yogindratva mupagatas sukhanidhi yogindra chudamanihi. Beautiful verse, lovely verse. So now we know who this beloved is. Okay, there is no beloved in the bed of the yogi. Please don't come to that conclusion. And if you have come to the conclusion, if you have by chance uh, come to that conclusion, please call me after class. Okay, this is an emergency. Yeah, so <laughs> then I will disabuse you of this notion and teach this again. All right, so the, the beloved is just one's own delight in oneself. That is the, the, the fruit of this knowledge. The Upanishad is feminine and the, this Vidya, this knowledge is feminine. So therefore, the beloved is also feminine. It's not about yogi, man and beloved woman. Don't think like that. Okay. So this is feminine. So what kind of a lady is this self-knowledge that one enjoys, that the yogi enjoys, this is there. And then so she is Tanvangi. Tanvi means slender. Tan, uh, tanu means body and uh, tan, tanvi, feminine, means uh, one of a uh, slender body. Tanvangi, the one who is endowed with a slender body. Taruni. So the beloved is not uh, grey and wrinkled. She is also ever youthful because she embodies that self-knowledge which, which uh, uh, says that, uh, you know, that the person is free of death. That is what she embodies. So then, uh, so Taruni, she is young. Vilasa Rasika. Vilasa Rasika means she, uh, Vilasa means play. Rasika, she enjoys play. A very playful person she is. And how is the knowledge, how does the knowledge of the Upanishad make you playful? This is a very important question. How does the knowledge of the Upanishad make one playful? Because we see, how can it not be, how can it not be fun and playful? <laughs> Here, 
and it's full of humor really and it's full of play why because for, at the very outset you are trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist you say i am sad when there is no sadness you say i am fine i am finite when you are actually fine and when you are infinite <clears throat> You complain that you are alienated from everything else when there is nothing else really other than you that is worth reckoning. This is all play. <laughs> I'm mean, seriously equipped with this, uh, you know, embracing self ignorance. You say, I need a teacher. And what will the teacher do? Teach me non duality. Here you are reproducing another duality. You are separate from the teacher, teacher is separate from you. That is again another form of play. It's all play. And first you say, I am ignorant. And then you say, I am knowledgeable. Now I know, I know. That which was unchanging, there was never a time you did not know. You may not have known that you know. That's the only thing. And the so called ignorance is dispelled by the so called knowledge and by the so called guru. And who is teaching the so-called shishya? It's all as though, as though, as though, as though, as though. And then seriously you say, now I have to do some sadhana. I have to practice. I can't let go of my practice. One day if I don't meditate, I am not, I'm fit to be tied. And so seriously you go into meditation as though. You tell, shut up everybody, quiet, hold the door, lock this, lock that, shut off the phone. I am meditating, me, I am meditating. And then what? The meditation goes well. For how long? A few seconds. And then you say, the thought arises. What is the thought? What is the thought that arises? Oh, this is a lovely meditation. And then what happens? The samadhi is broken. But as though, as though. But here I take seriously. Everything I take seriously. Buying a meditation cushion for myself, then buying that ding ding bell with in the form of a bowl, which I can rub and make it, uh, you know, last, that nice echo to last, peaceful. And that itself needs a little round cushion of its own, all zen, beautiful, very nice, very orderly. Everything is clean and crisp and nice, easy lines. And, you know, it invites uh, the mind also to be clean and clear, very nice all as though and here i'm trying to cleanse the mind when the mind itself is a dependent reality this is, this is all a play and the whole universe which is taken seriously is again very very it's all a play every feeling is entertained and enshrined and then and anointed as the king and then it lasts for a few seconds go Every object of desire is pursued till the cows come home and then is again, once one has got it, one thinks, okay, I, this is all I wanted in life. <clears throat> Famous last words. That is not at all true. So this whole thing, the, the way of engaging with oneself, the way of engaging with the Jagat and the way of engaging with Ishvara, God, Bhagavan, is also full of play. Where are you? I don't know where you are, <laughs> says the one who is non-separate from God. Who is Ishvara looking for Ishvara? The Saint Kabir has composed a very nice couplet. Lehri dhunde leherko, tapada dhunde sut, jeev dhunde brahmako, tino ut ke ut. The little wave, lehri means a wavelet, is looking for the ocean. Oh, Shin, where are you? <laughs> Please don't abandon me. I want to discover you. I want to become you. Idiot, you are already the ocean. Every wave is non separate from the ocean. The ocean is just a, the, the, the wave is just a upadhi, a name and a form for that which is the ocean. And, and so, the, the, the wave doesn't know that. It is looking everywhere, taking it very seriously, feeling very alienated. And if, as though that is not enough, the, the, the cloth is searching for the yarn. Saint Kabir 
came from a family of weavers. So a lot of his couplets have yarn and cloth in them. And a lot of his couplets have this metaphor, weaver metaphor of the loom, the hand loom, and the yarn and the cloth. You will see this, this is a very recurring thing. 14th century, 13th century saint. And so Kapada don't they soothe. Meanwhile, the cloth, if it had a human mind, it would spend all its time wanting to be united with the yarn. Cloth is, fabric is yarn. <laughs> There is no difference. The effect is the cause. And so then, Jeeva Dhunde Brahmapo. The Jeeva is looking for Brahman in the same manner. And then the Saint Kabir concludes, Tino Uth Ke Uth. All of them are fools among fools. If a bunch of fools are there, we pick, up, we pick out the most foolish one. And this is what these three um, these three searches embody. So it's all a play. And even in one's relationship to the whole, to, to the source, to God, to Ishwara, by whatever name you want to call it or think about it. And that, there also, there is, it's all a play because one is searching for something that one already is. So that, therefore, this, this, uh, this Taruni, this uh, uh, this beloved who is greeting the sage in his bed is is uh, is very playful vilasa rasika and then chitte chamatkarini chitte means the heart chittam the emotions the heart chamatkarini means that which uh, which uh, what is that which surprises the mind which makes the mind, it turns the mind into some kind of a, a magic. By some magic, delights the mind. So she is a magician. This self-knowledge is, is a magician that transforms the mind, that surprises, astonishes, and transforms the mind so totally that it has trouble recognizing itself. That's why after a few you know, sessions of Vedanta, one wonders, how was I before? I don't even recognize myself. How was I before? And that is that is the uh, so chitte chamatkarini, the one who astonishes the mind and surprises the mind with the magic. And what is this magic? The magic of vritti jnanam. The jnanam that is that that comes. Vritti jnanam means the, uh, the, the, the knowledge that is conveyed through words. That is what is vritti jnana. The knowledge that is conveyed through words. And how do these words operate? They actually surprise the mind. If you know that self-knowledge is coming, then everybody would be, would have hundreds of things to say and hundreds of ways to protect themselves uh, against the self-knowledge of which they might be afraid because they don't know exactly what it is and they don't want to give up something else, whatever they have. So the knowledge that is always conveyed in the form of a surprise. The aha moment you have in the class is a surprise. You don't know it is coming. That's why it is effective. Vritti Jnana means that which is conveyed through an impression. The words that create an impression in the mind. And what is that impression in the form of a thought? What is the thought? The thought that all this is really one. OMG! And I am included in all this that is one. This thought is called Akhandakara Vritti. Uh, Akhandakara means a non-dual, non-fragmented thought of everything that, uh, the, 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 of everything as infinite, of you as infinite that is conveyed from the mouth of the teacher to the ear of the student that is transmitted, that is imparted. The thought is like a carrier pigeon. That goes away. That flies away. The thought is ephemeral. But the message that it has left behind stays. Why? How is that the, 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 the accoutrements of the thought, the, whatever the thought, uh, the content of the thought stays, but the thought itself goes. Thought has to go. Thought comes, thought goes. 
बट दिस फाइनाइट थॉट दिस क्षणिका वृत्ति दिस फाइनाइट थॉट कैरीज द इनफिनिट कैरीज द इनफिनिट इट्स जस्ट लाइक दैट कैरियर पिजन एनॉलेज एनालेज सो द पिजन फ्लाइज एंड द पिजन इज is it has been sent to the prince the prince is vacationing somewhere and then he is called back to the kingdom well the father has uh, as a few more uh, people paying uh, uh, paying homage to him a few more kingdoms have surrendered themselves to him so the kingdom is bigger the coppers are bigger some good news and this is and then you come back soon because we have to anoint you as the heir apparent so this good news thing the good news pigeon comes and then what uh, and then lands in the balcony where the prince is vacationing <clears throat> along with the with with his wife the princess vacation and then Uh, comes and lands on the balcony oh and they are very well trained so on its leg is a little piece of whatever the message manuscript paper whatever you say and then that is uh, offloaded from the leg the pigeon doesn't stay there pigeon flies away <laughs> weaving this message good news <coughs> to to the prince leaving this message the pigeon has flown but the message has been ingested similarly the thought the shell of the thought which contains the vritti akhanda akhanda kar vritti that uh, transforming message which is conveyed through a ephemeral thought in the teaching situation that which makes a lasting impression that is what is here uh, the chamatkarini this knowledge surprises you are taken by surprise otherwise if you if you knew every class this is how it is going to be and then next that is going to come and after that something else is going to happen nobody will sign on i am telling you everybody will say been there done that and even despite the fact that uh, that uh, the 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 knowledge is full of surprises people still get jaded because that is the uh, that is the what is that the uh, the resistances in the mind due to unfulfilled ragadveshas due to the power of uh, strong uh, prejudices preferences etc strong resistance unconscious mind childhood issues etc the knowledge still doesn't speak even though it is full of surprises so imagine if every class was predictable and if every class had everything you know that you already knew then there would be a jaded faded feeling of been there done that already there is a jaded feeling the one who the one who enters the classroom virtual or otherwise is a jaded faded jaded jaded jeeva jaded faded jeeva already one is tired of life wherever one has gone one has greeted disappointment primarily because one has wanted one one wants the the infinite but has got uh, embroiled uh, uh, permanently so to speak in the pursuit of the finite and here the pursuit of the infinite is also approached by the prospective student just like the pursuit of the finite <laughs> the infinite is also pursued like the finite i want to catch kill conquer mentality kill catch kill conquer and then mount it somewhere as a trophy people do this this is very sad hunters and everything they go kill one uh, wonderful animal a bison they go kill they go kill an elk with its magnificent antlers and everything and then they skin it and then mount the head in uh, in their room somewhere but this knowledge is not like that this knowledge is not like that because it is you what is being revealed is yourself by parting the waters <laughs> the murky waters of wrong thinking of wrong identification of wrong understand that is what is being revealed so therefore it is always a surprise 
every class carries kernels uh, of 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 the infinite the kernels go away and then what is revealed is the infinite the infinite being you it is immediately understood accepted and delighted in that is why she is surprising and delightful you don't know what her next move is going to be and then jate premani and jate premani means in the birth of the love nityam eva sukhadam ananda leela mayi so uh, uh, she is constant she is a nityam a constant companion what kind of a constant companion a constant companion who is always the giver of happiness she is always the giver of happiness she is this self knowledge which is which is atma which is you so the atma is the giver of always the giver of she who is the giver of self happiness when nityam always ananda leela mayi and she plays with this happiness because you see many times people when they are promised happiness as a result of the study of vedanta either do not believe it or they want some kind of a drama just rama is not enough you have to put a d in front of it i want to know that i am happy i want some drama i want ecstasy i want drama and and really speaking uh, in this tranquil quietude there is no reason for drama but if you want this drama then all you have to all the gnani has to do is engage with the world and 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 definitely the engagement with the world i mean i wouldn't say it produces drama but it produces a much more um, dynamic form of ananda than the quiet ananda enjoyed uh, e e e by oneself so the dynamic ananda that is produced is is well documented in vedic uh, in the in the upanishads and in the vedas अहम वृक्षस्यरेरिव कीर्ति पृष्टं गिरेरिव ऊर्ध्व पवित्रो वाजिनी व स्वमृतमस्मि दिस इज द वर्ड्स ऑफ क्वोट एंड क्वोट एनलाइटनमेंट बाय द सेज त्रिशंकु ओकरिंग इन द तैत्रीय उपनिषद ओकरिंग इन द तैत्रीय उपनिषद आई एम वन विद द ट्रीज आई एम ऑन टॉप ऑफ द वर्ल्ड आई एम दिस आई एम दैट that is that that is the drama so to speak within course that's the dynamic expression of ananda and again in the taitri upanishad the person of knowledge says ahamannam 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 ahamannado ahamannado ahamannadah ahagga shloka kriddah ahagga shloka kriddah ahagga shloka kritu aham asmi prathama jaritasya and then if you translate this it looks like a mad person is talking full of that that uh, uh, love that joy that delight which is oneself he is being expressed for the sake of the world or in the world in a recognizable way and so what does the person of uh, uh, self knowledge chant aham annam i am the food i am the food i am the food Oh, everybody is eating you! No, no, no! Aham annadha. I am also the eater of the food, and I am the composer of this shloka, which is talking about the oneness between the food and the eater of the food. And uh, and then I am, you know, I am never born. I am never dead. Like this, so that the, all this has been well documented. And so here, that delight uh, with with a little bit of uh, pizzazz, which is not always. inwardly enjoyed but also finds outward expression in the gnani's dealing with the world is um, is uh, is embodied in this beloved uh, the, in in this example of the beloved who is ananda leela mayin so she is she, she leela means the play again so the, the that which which is which has outward expression so that is also there more we we'll see Two weeks from now. Oh wait, I have to go to Washington D.C. So um, 
let's look at the calendar give me a second uh two weeks from now is 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 uh yeah so two weeks from now you cannot see um, next week shall we meet yes no maybe yes sir. yes, yes. Next yes week, sir. so that after that uh, it will be it will be uh, a little break because i have to go to washington dc all right om purnamadah purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaga purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Harihi Om Thank you. Thank you. Namaskaram. <laughs>